on the dotted line. Better the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, blue, never give up. You represent America. Open and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at Today on Liberty's Kids. Come on, men. We have to catch whoever's hanging these posters. And if I find so much as one poster, it's jail for the lot of you. Dearest Mother, they called it the Boston Tea Party, but believe me, this is one party I wish I had missed. The Yankees claim all this trouble is over taxes. Why are you destroying the tea? We're protesting unfair taxation. Parliament raised the tea tax over our objections. Maybe next time they'll listen. Ruffians cowardly disguised as Mohawk Indians destroyed a shipment of tea. No taxation without representation! Redcoats! Abandon ship! Abandon ship! Sorry, Miss Phillips, but oh. I can't print my story from jail. Let me go! I said let me go! I'd love to, but Dr. Franklin told us to take care of you. James, look out! In a struggle, I lost Father's locket. I'm very angry. America is a strange, strange place. I can't say that I like what I've seen of it. We live in a barn hiding from His Majesty's soldiers. Sheltered by a remarkable woman, a poet and slave named Phyllis Wheatley. James, Henri, and Moses support these radicals, but I, for one, can't wait to leave Boston. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry, Caesar. I won't brush so hard. Hey! Allow me. When is Dr. Franklin coming? Soon, I hope. Very soon. Your loyal, loving daughter, Sarah. How many do you see, Henri? One, two, three, four, five. English, Henri, not French. I'm counting the English. How many are there now? Too many. There mustn't be a soldier left in England. What should we do? What should we do? The British are occupying Boston. I've got to get this to the Gazette right away. Come on, Henri. On the evening of 16 December, the year of our Lord, 1773, cowardly bandits, disguised as Indians, attacked the Dartmouth, a ship flying the colors of His Majesty King George III. And who is responsible for inflaming the subjects of Boston to this violence? None other than the man before us, the esteemed Benjamin Franklin. <gasps> His crimes are enormous. The East India Company lost hundreds of crates of tea worth many thousands of pounds. This lawlessness was encouraged by Dr. Franklin in his speeches and writings. His inflammatory paper, the Pennsylvania Gazette, continues to foment sedition Rebellion, violence, treason! You have no honor, sir! You are a scoundrel, sir! Have you nothing to say for yourself? The heart of a fool is in his mouth, but the mouth of a wise man is in his heart. Ah, the famous Franklin wit. Perhaps I need to remind you, a rope is the proper reward for treason.
Boston Harbor is closed. Hundreds of new soldiers arrived by ship this morning. The whole city is filled with redcoats. <gasps> Would you please mind your tongue? Where's my pencil? I have a story to write. This is headline news. Ahem, <clears throat> James. Those filthy red coats are everywhere. That's right, James. After that long sea voyage, these lovely red coats could use a good cleaning. <gasps> this may need some soap and water. Let me help you, Miss Phillips. Fine morning, isn't it? Tis you who could use the soap and water in that smart mouth of yours. You're absolutely right. You'll have to forgive my manners. I'm an orphan. I was raised on the streets and sometimes forget my place. Where's that grub we was promised? I'll check on it right away, sir. Why don't you come give me a hand in the kitchen? The kitchen? That's woman's work. H hey! The kitchen, of course. It would be an honor to help, my lady. What are redcoats doing in the barn? It's called quartering. A soldier just knocks on your door anytime, day or night, and moves into your house. We have five more upstairs. I can't believe King George would allow that. It was Parliament's doing. They call it the Coercive Acts. The Intolerable Acts would be more like it. This is an outrage. That's right. We have to cook for them, wash their clothes, and they don't have to pay a single shilling. I am outraged, too. This pie was too small. You are the funny one, aren't you? How did you come to be in the colonies? I came here with my parents. Henri was six years old when he left France with his parents. They signed an agreement with the ship's captain to work for seven years in exchange for their passage. Three weeks into the journey, the plague hit the ship, and half the people on board died, including Henri's parents. The captain made me his cabin boy. He said I had to pay off my family's passage. Oh, I worked all the time, cleaning his room, getting his food, his clothes, hauling buckets of coal. And if I did anything wrong, he threw me in the hold for hours. How dare he? I belonged to him. You mean he made you a slave? Henri, that's terrible. Thank heaven you're here now. How did you do it? Moses and I went to the dock to pick up parts of a printing press that had come over from France. We went down into the hold to get the parts. There was Henri, on the floor, behind bars. I thought they came to hurt me. But Moses got him out with the handle of the printing press. It was amazing. It was just what needed to be done. But how did you get him off the ship? We found the crate of parts, and Moses took the parts out, hid them under straw, and put Henri in instead. We closed the crate and carried it off the ship. Right under the captain's nose? Right under his nose. But we had to wait another month to find other parts for the printer. I'm still not sure it was a good trade. Then I wrote to Dr. Franklin and asked to have Henri work in the print shop to pay for his room and board. Dr. Franklin said yes, but then he did something very bad. What? He told me I must learn to read and write French and English. <laughs> <laughs> the speaking you had, but the reading we have to work on. See, work on, it work. Speaking of which, I must get back to my work or it will raise suspicion. Lieutenant Brampton was by here earlier talking about the tea party and telling Master Wheatley, if Boston's going to cause trouble, Boston's going to pay the piper. That only makes sense. Whose side are you on? I didn't know there were sides. We're all the king's subjects. Maybe you're a subject, but I'm a citizen. I have rights. Doesn't Phyllis have rights? You know what your problem is, Miss Phillips? You think too much for a girl. And you talk too much for a gentleman. Phyllis, I need a printing press. I've got to get the word out. James, until Moses can fix the wagon, we're stuck here. The city is swarming with soldiers who would like nothing better than to arrest us for your tea party. Take this, James. Tom Maloney published my poems. I can use his press anytime. Mr. Maloney? Tom Maloney? Open up. We're friends of Phyllis Wheatley. There's no one in there. Today's the Sabbath. The Lord's Day. Well, the Lord helps those who help themselves. Remember, 
Phyllis gave us the key. Ladies first. At last, a sign of manners. Redcoats. We have to work fast. Them kids go off to. I've been busy doing my chores. I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Nigel, Basil, Taunt, on your feet! Those little troublemakers have run off. The city is under martial law. The breaking curfew. We'd better fetch Lieutenant Brampton. Oh no! I've got to warn them. I'll bet they're the same brats who got away during the tea riot. But they won't get away a second time. Keep going, Henri. Aye, aye, sir. The sun's set. Good. It's time to spread the word. What's wrong, Sarah? James, are you really an orphan? I heard you tell the soldiers before. It's true. I was a tiny baby when it happened. Mother and father didn't have one of Dr. Franklin's newfangled lightning rods. Our house was struck and burst into flames. It burned to the ground. I was lucky. A neighbor pulled me out in the nick of time. Dr. Franklin's lightning rod has saved thousands of lives. When I was old enough, I sought him out. He offered to take me in as an apprentice, and I've been working at the Gazette ever since. I'm sorry for complaining about a silly locket, when you've lost so much more. That locket meant a lot, huh? My father gave it to me before he sailed for America. When it was around my neck, it was like having him near me, always. He went up the Ohio River to explore new lands. When he returns, Mother will join us here, but we haven't heard a word from Father in nearly a year. You're worried about him. See this? It's beautiful. It's my mother's ring. So, you see, I know just how you feel about the locket. James, I'm done! Grab a stack, Henri. It's time to go! Must you do this? You'll only make things worse. I have to. Why? Because, as Dr. Franklin's friend, Edmund Burke, said, an Englishman is the unfittest person on earth to argue another Englishman into slavery. In summary, my lords, Benjamin Franklin, the deputy postmaster of His Majesty's colonies, is a traitor. The proof is in his own words, his own writings. And for this treachery, I ask that as a minimum, he be stripped of his position as postmaster and that he bear the stigma and shame of a scoundrel disloyal to king and country. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, I thank Mr. Wedderburn for everything he has said against me. What kind of trick is this? My gratitude is sincere. You've answered a question which has troubled me since boyhood. But you have finally put my mind at ease. The question is fundamental. And when my fellow colonists arrive at the same answer as I, a great empire may fall. More treason! Mr. Wedderburn says I'm a traitor. But this is not true. The question he has answered for me is thus, am I a British subject or am I the citizen of a new nation, a country distinct and different from England? And today I declare my answer, I am not British, I am an American. <gasps> and man can only betray his own country. My country is no longer England, my country is America. <laughs> here. Hey, you! Halt! That's an order! Run! What do we do now? 
way Moses has that axle fixed. Henri, I think we may have overstayed our welcome in Boston. How do we get past those red coats? Follow me. Look out! <laughs> Must have fallen off a cart. Come on, men. We have to catch whoever's hanging these posters. Are you all right, Henri? Which one of you said that? James, Henri, are you all right? Whoa! Quick, we have to get out of here. Too late. Everybody inside. The wagon is good as new. We must leave town right now while it's still dark. So, my men and I are riding past this print shop when I hear voices coming from inside. So I ask myself, what's someone doing in a print shop at this hour on a Sunday? You know what I told myself? I said, printing these. You have this all wrong, sir. These gentlemen are interested in my poetry. They wanted to see where it was published. Poetry? You? What do you take me for? Show them, Phyllis. Yes, let's hear this poetry of yours. Descend to earth, there place thy throne. To succor man's afflicted son, each human heart inspire. To act in bounties unconfined, enlarge the close contracted mind, and fill it with thy fire. Right, so you're a poet. But I still believe these runts have something to do with spreading rebellion, and I aim to find the evidence. Tear the place apart if you have to, and if I find so much as one poster, it's jail for the lot of you. You. Me? What's your name? Sarah Phillips, sir. Phillips, you say? I served under a Major Phillips during the Seven Years' War. Major Phillips is my father, sir. Is that so? Then you're an Englishwoman, Miss Phillips. It's your duty to tell me who made these posters. The truth now. Your father would expect you to tell the truth to an officer in the service of his king. I... 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 Spill it, girl. Well, I'm waiting, young lady. Where are my manners? You must be half frozen riding in this cold weather. I'll fix a pot of tea on the Franklin stove. There, the fire is stoked. We'll have hot tea in half a tick. Um, uh, now what was that you asked me? Something about posters? Nothing, Lieutenant. The place is clean. No sign of them signs. Oh, I don't have time for this. Come on, men. The rabble-rousers are out getting away while we're dilly-dallying with children and poets and tea. Quick, to the wagon, before they come back. Phyllis, how can we ever thank you? Keep fighting for freedom, that's how. Now be off. I'll keep watch until you're safely gone. Thank you. For what? You know. I don't know what you're talking about. Sure you do. You saved our hides. James, I'm very tired and I'm cold. <sighs> I'm going to make a gentleman out of you yet. And I'm going to make an American out of you. Yeah! Yeah! Moses, good. That looks great. Dearest Mother, so much has happened, I hardly know where to begin. Your latest letter brought the shocking news from London. 
It's terrible that Dr. Franklin has lost his position as postmaster. But praise the Lord he didn't end up in jail. Or worse. James, cut out that racket. A little more, Moses. Good. Would you please stop that noise? I'm trying to concentrate. Go ahead, James. It's finished. Sarah? What is it? The boys have a little something for you. For me? A thank you for saving us. Here. For me? Moses made it. It was my idea. It's beautiful. You like it? I love it. But where in the world did you get the gold? Are you sure you like it? <gasps> Your ring. It's the greatest gift I've ever received. <laughs>